After the Civil War, a group of former slaves found economic independence harvesting oysters in Suffolk. The community thrived for a century until pollution devastated the industry. WHRO has the story of one woman fighting to keep their legacy alive. We're in the Chuckatuck Creek. I got about 500 acres out there. On a warm spring morning, Mary Hill is on a boat working her oyster grounds just north of the Crittenden Bridge. She and two other watermen lower a dredge into the water. The metal cage scrapes the bottom of the oyster beds. Then they raise it up and dump the bounty. To Hill, this is more than just a job. It's her family legacy. These reefs are the same ones her father worked decades ago and his father before him. This is seventh generation of oyster grounds. So these oysters been sitting here waiting for me. My ancestors waiting for me to come out here. Those ancestors were formerly enslaved people who moved here from Williamsburg to start a new life after the Civil War. In their new village called Hobson, Hill says the black oystermen created a flourishing economy. It, it became our livelihood. But foremost, it was a pathway to our freedom. She is now the last of the Hobson watermen and the first water woman. The Suffolk community is one of many around the Chesapeake Bay where African Americans prospered as watermen. But officials say historic resources associated with these sites are quickly disappearing. Last year, they were listed as some of Virginia's most endangered historic places. Retired historian Tommy Boger taught and researched local black history at Norfolk State University. He says Hobson's founders were part of a black union encampment in the Williamsburg area. After the war, white officials saw them as a threat, and they fled. Some of those blacks who had gathered in that area had probably escaped from the Suffolk area of Barris Neck before slavery fell, and now they were willing to go back home. They brought knowledge about oystering that they'd gained to help feed their families during slavery. Boger says Hobson's new residents became prosperous and controlled their own properties. By the 1900s, most of the uh, blacks who were laying on us, they were modest homes that they built. Hill grew up in one of those homes, with lots of land around it where her family farmed and built a church. She recalls Hobson being tight-knit and self-sufficient during her childhood. Life revolved around the water. I got baptized in the Nansman River. A lot of us got baptized in the river. It spiritually connected us. Oystermen plied their trade all winter long. Hill remembers her father using newspaper to insulate his boots and plucking icicles off his head when he got home. Things took a turn in the late 1960s when Hill was about seven years old. Industrial plants dumped a toxic chemical called Kipone into the James River. It polluted the whole watershed and shut down fishing operations. Almost overnight, most of Hobson's watermen had to close up shop. Hill says people had to look outside the village for work. When the keep home came and devastated our industry, they had no legacy to leave to us. Hill was one of those who left for a while. She moved back about 25 years ago to care for her aging mother and got interested in the local history. Eventually, she also ventured back out on the water and now sells oysters under the name Barrett's Neck Seafood. It's all possible because Hobson residents refuse to ever give up their oyster grounds. They believed that those oysters would come back one day for survival. And it is back. Hill's also fighting to preserve what remains of Hobson back on land. She helped get a highway historical marker, noting the village's importance to African-American watermen culture. Standing next to the marker, just across from her house, Hill says it was a good first step. But she doesn't want Hobson to live in the past. We don't want to be just some people you read about in a history book. We want this to remain a thriving village for future generations. And that's 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 my calling. That's the that's the thing I have to never be willing to give up. Catherine Hafner, WHRO News.